All right, so as I said, the next step we're going to look at is what is the boat plot of my guesstimation, if you can say, on the graph here. So let's just start new here. So my plot, we've placed the poles there and the zeros kind of there. That's where we want them to be. We want the two hertz to go through and the 50 hertz to go quiet. Now to see what the actual values are, we just get coordinate systems here. So we get, we calculated the coordinate systems using school maths that uh, sign rules and cos rules to get the coordinates of that positions, the optimal coordinates positions. But it's still kind of a, a guesstimation. We still guessed, educated guess, but a guess nonetheless. So we want to see where they're going to be. So the next formula we're going to use is replace the z's. Remember the equation for a z pole, a z transform looks like this. Just move this down. This is the formula for a z-transform. Now what we do is we replace the z's with e to the power j w t n, where w t n is going to be this part here. I'll just explain it now. That part here. I'm going to explain that part now. So once again, we can see we've got two zeros, two poles. Uh, what happens with if we have three or four, it means we have more of these brackets. So at the moment, there's just two zeros, two poles, two zeros, two poles. If you have four zeros, it means you'll have to have above the equation four of these brackets. Same with the poles. So uh, what's next? We said the poles must be a, mustn't be on the line. If it's on the line, it might be that you're going to divide by zero, giving you a singularity. Um, so if you want to make oscillators, you'll put poles on the zero, but the optimal place is 0.7 away. If you get a pole on a zero and an oscillation, that's normally when you like when you hear a microphone uh, squeal, start squealing on an amplifier system. That's because that pole is actually close to the unity circle. Or if you plan oscillators, that's how you're going to do it. But that's not part of this uh, ex explanation, so we'll just know. Poles is going to let the frequencies through, zeros is going to stop them. So, here I've decided to go with 16 values. So we can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If you go around, you'll see there's 16 values. And the reason for that is I want to plot a frequency plot for this one. I want to do the boat plot. So I'm going to go back to this one. I want to see how is this filter going to look. Is it going to be a low pass filter? or a high pass filter or a band pass filter, just to know roughly what my filter is going to do. And to need to do this, I need to go from 0 to fs to 200 hertz. So from 0 to fs. And each of these points, I'm going to calculate the distance from that pole for each of those points. The more points you put here, the better your resolution is going to be, obviously. Um, so you can make it a 1000, but remember you have to do this if you don't have MathCAD or software, you have to do this with your calculator. So it means you have to do this calculation 16 times in this case. So in this case, I'm calculating 16 times. And this is now the same type of math they use for uh, planets and black holes type of thing. So this is a gravity force and that's uh, anti-gravity force. And um, you calculate the distance. So what's the influence of that gravity force type of on it? So what's the influence, the multiplication influence? So again, I've got 16 points. You can change this around. I just decided on 16 now just to prove my point. So 2 pi, complete circle is 2 pi, divided by 16 will give you 0.38. So WNT will be 0 0.383, just to get that positions around. Now. So 16 positions around the circle, that's 16 positions around the circle. So the first one is 0. That's then zero. So for the first value, n is zero. So e to the power j, if you put that in and you do it for all 16 values, so there's going to be 16 values on this plot here, you're going to get an answer like this. Let me just get my answer this side. Just see where my pen is now. You get a getter answer like this. And just note that you have to absolute value the h just to get rid of the 
imaginary part or not make it positive as well. So we can see we suspect that it goes from 0 to 100. I just calibrate the x axis so it's n times my sample rate divided by 16 because we've got 16 points and they are at specific points away now. Again, here I've got f is divided by 2, so it just goes from 0 to 100, just showing me the positive side. If I remove this, the ghost image will be there as well. What do we see? Remember, on our graph, on our graph, we put a pole there and a zero there, one at two and a zero at 50. So we expect the filter to do something like this. And can you see? It's doing what we expect to do. So we know we are happy. This is what we want to do. If you want to do something else, let's say you've got three frequency spectrums like this, three frequency components, and you put a pole there and a zero there and a zero there, and you calculate the poles and the zeros according to this, then this should be looking something like this, a zero and a pole and a zero. If you want to put a pole there and a zero there and a zero there, then you're gonna get, as I explained in the previous video, very interesting filter designs, something like this. But for this case, we just want the low one. For this interesting designs, that's why pole zero placement is an interesting way to make a filter, because you can make interesting boat plots that you're going to calculate and see that you're happy with. So now you're happy with your filter. If you're not happy, you can move your poles around. Now you can move those coordinates and see, you can tweak it a bit and see, is it what you want? So you can see some of the frequencies are still getting through here. If there was a noise at 20, a certain percentage of it will still have gotten through. Where the 51, can you see the 51 is touching the zero there? So we Definitely going to make the 50 hertz a complete silent zero there. This is also some type of amplification. So, what this filter does is it takes your frequency and multiply it with, let's say, 20 here. Yeah? So, it makes it louder than the rest. So, it, it's not dissipating the other ones, it's just making it louder than the rest. So, first step when you want to design a, a circuit, you place the poles where you think the frequencies must go through, you put the zeros there where you think there's the frequencies that mustn't go through, you put zeros for them. You do this type of analysis where you replace the Z with that, so when after that you get a boat plot to see is that the shape of the filter that you want. If that's the shape of the filter that you want, the next step is to calculate the coefficients, which I'm going to show in the next video.